now it's time for Melinda and Pat to come forward. They have a little teaching for us tonight. Yeah, how often I use these things. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyway, I want to congratulate Nathan. He passed his test. And he's got his certificate now. He can get himself a job. So, congratulate him. <laughs> Proud of you, Nathan. And also, warned a few people, there will be no hecklers or tomatoes thrown while we're up here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Well, Buster said he'd clean the tomatoes, that they would be clean, so, you know. Oh, well, it is what it is. Well, we've been asked to talk about uh, some of the gifts of the Spirit and particularly the gift of helps. And under helps falls a few categories, and, and so I'm doing greeter slash hospitality. And uh, so... Um, I hope we're doing what the pastor wanted. If not, I'm sorry. <laughs> so anyway, um, most of what I can tell you about tonight is, is the experiences I've had over the years. I've, uh, I know that this is what I've been called to do. And... If you knew me back when I was really young, uh, very shy, very, very backward, no self-esteem, couldn't get two words out of me, and um, I would have never believed that I would be where I am today. But I give my grandmother a lot of thanks for her prayers for bringing me through to this. But anyway... Um, about 25 years ago or so, I, people would tell me I had the gift of helps. And back then, I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't know what this is. I wasn't that learned about this stuff. So, uh, okay. Um, but I didn't really understand. I was too shy, like I said. And, and the way I got into greeting is um, some of you remember Barbara Chapman. Um, Sherry and I call her the commander and uh, she was the hospitality lady at the church at the little white church <laughs> or even before the little white church and I was always one who would get there early to church and I would stand back there and talk to her and somebody would come in I'd shake their hands and so on and so forth and, and um, so whenever she couldn't be there I would kind of sit in for her and take the attendance and, talk to people and everything and um, one day pastor pastor Dent came to me he says would you like to take that job permanently <laughs> I'm like uh, yeah I guess so because Barbara was resigning so what does it take to be a greeter well I'm, I have found out over the years that it takes every gift of the spirit every fruit of the spirit <laughs> not every gift of the spirit but every fruit of the spirit and um, the main one is love. You gotta love people because, uh, well, I'll tell you here as we go. They're not always lovable. You gotta be committed and dedicated to this position. And uh, you gotta get here early. And sometimes you have to stay a little bit later, but uh, it's worth it. Um, you meet new people and sometimes a greeter will be the first person to meet a new person. So you're going to give them the impression of the whole church. So 
you know, you got to keep that in mind. Uh, you have to have, definitely have to have a sense of humor. That is just as important as love, definitely. You've got to have patience and compassion. You've got to have discernment, kindness, because you never know when that person walks through the door, whether it's a visitor or if it's people from your own congregation, what they're going through, what kind of day they're having. It doesn't matter what I'm feeling. And uh, I walk in here and put a smile on my face, and you don't know what I've been through or what I'm going through or anything. So, But you also have to have wisdom. Wisdom to know when to back off from somebody or wisdom to know to do whatever you need to do. So we're there to serve the people. We're there to see their needs, to meet their needs. And sometimes it can be quite unusual or even entertain, entertaining, <laughs> entertaining in surfing. John will remember this a couple weeks ago. What did we do back there a couple weeks ago? Me and you and Josiah. You remember? Take me out to the ball game. <laughs> <laughs> well, we started singing, take me out to the ball game, and we weren't just quietly singing. We were loudly singing it, didn't we, Josiah? Do you remember? <laughs> and John wasn't feeling so great, but you know what? After we got done, he was a happy camper because we sang about his favorite um, sport. And who's your team? There you go, Cincinnati Reds. Okay. So that, that can be entertaining. And uh, John entertains me a lot. And uh, he's a good man, and I just really, really like you, buddy. And uh, then there was the, the um, episode, a lot of you won't know this lady, but you remember Mum, Sandy Donald. Well, uh, this was down at um, down to school down to school we had in Dunbar and uh, one evening I was standing in the back of the sanctuary and mum was a good friend of mine she was uh, probably in her 80s and she was uh, from Australia and she called me honey bunny and uh, we were good friends we did a clown ministry together and stuff so we were good friends but mum walked in one evening she'd been in the restroom and she came in and I was standing in the back, and she walked past me. She gave me a hug. She walked past me, and her whole skirt was tucked up, showing everything. I stopped her. Mo, or mom, not Mo. Mom. And I started pulling on her skirt, and she goes, <laughs> and I said, yes, let's do this before everybody sees you. Well, I picked on her about it, and... Uh, we just went on, but I picked on her about it. Well, later on that night, I got home and, and sat down, and I meant to look that up, and I forgot. Uh, my Bible just fell open to a scripture that said, and I will lift their skirts above their heads. <laughs> that was not an accident. God's got a sense of humor. In the, but that was just, I wish I could remember where it was, but I, I forgot to look it up. But uh, anyway... It was in the Old Testament, I know that. But anyway, I even encountered the witch that some of you know about. Um, she creeped me out. But um, I had a one-on-one -on -one encounter with her. It wasn't anything bad or anything, but it kind of scared me a little bit. But I knew the Lord would take care of me because it was just her and I. And uh, But I don't know, know if I knew at the time that's what she was, but I had a very uneasy feeling about her. So you will encounter only heaven knows what. So, you know, keep that in mind if you'd ever be a greeter. Um, and, and, and studying Jesus, he... he study about Jesus and really think about it he operated in the hospitality 
and um, I never really thought about it until I was doing this, but he did. He, he served bread and fish to the crowds, made sure everybody was fed. Uh, when he made breakfast for the disciples, uh, that, that's in John 21, 1 through 14, if you want to read, read up on that. And also, he washed the disciples' feet. That is hospitality. That's uh, showing love for people. And, and uh, verse Peter 2.21 um, tells us to be Christ-like. And this, th to this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. We are to be Christ-like. If he operated in hospitality, so, so should we. <laughs> okay. Um, for... <laughs> I'm just her sidekick. I mean, I'm just her moral support. She's my support. moral support. Yes. yes. First Corinthians 11 and 1, we see where Paul said for us to follow his example. As I follow the example of Christ. So we are to be Christ-like. I've taught this in my class a few times. It's really important to know who Jesus was, what he, what he is to us in the different ways we can be like Christ. And main major thing is to love people. And that's what we have to do as greeters and hospitality too. Um, in Ephesians 5, 1 and 2, it says, Be imitators of God, therefore as dearly loved children, and live a life of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So... We are to imitate God, be like him. Uh, I still serve under hospitality, even though I gave up the position in being in charge of the kitchen. Uh, it was a difficult and painful decision for me to make. Lots of prayer going on, lots of tears. But after lots of prayer, I had to do it. God said, it's time. And uh, I miss it, but he said, it's just, it's just time. Uh, but being a greeter and a teacher... Uh, I still serve under hospitality in various ways, and um, God has given us all spiritual gifts. And you should you should desire to find out what that gift is. Pray about it. Look at your life. I can look back over my life from the time I was a child on up, and I can see the direction that God has brought me to this point, and how He put things in my life, like. I love crafts. My mother and I used to do craft shows and all kinds of stuff. And um, we took classes together, flower arranging, painting, stained glass, uh, different kinds of classes. And um, that's why I have bad eyes now. But uh, in order to have the gift of help, you definitely need the fruit of love. And actually, you need all the fruit of the Spirit. But uh, God brought me all this way. And... Never would I think that I would be doing any of these things. that I'm, I never thought I'd be standing here tonight if you would have told me 30 years ago. Uh-uh. No. You people are crazy. But First Peter 4, 9. Well, let's go back. Romans 12 and 13. This is a scripture that I found and years ago, and I always liked it. I printed it up, put it in a frame. Distributing to the necessity of the saints whatever the people need. If they need to find the restroom, if they need some tissues, whatever they need. Uh, if they need to talk to somebody, I've had people come in and looking for the pastor, strangers, and, and had a need, and I said, well, let me find the right person for you. Just be there and meet their needs. And anyway, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. So that is giving to... I say the hospitality department. First Peter 4, 9. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Use it joyfully, freely, with a lot of love. Um, 
don't be grudging. Don't be, ah, I've got to go in and greet these people today. I don't feel like it. No, you don't do that. You don't do that. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, they, they, they have their reward. Right? That's true. That's true. But um, Greeters are to serve the people. Greeting with a smile on your face, even when you are unhappy inside or grumpy, doesn't matter. Uh, as a greeter, I have been in many situations, sometimes praying under my breath for help. I've seen and heard things I wish I had not. Sometimes I do crazy stuff, like, like singing the other day. And we had a good time, though, didn't we, John? Singing that song, we did. And uh, always make sure John's got plenty of candy, got his water. You know, we got to do that. Got to make sure he's taken care of. Uh, I keep attendance, and it's not just for something to do, but sometimes they, for different reasons, need to know how the attendance is, how many people, what age they are, and all that stuff. So um, uh, I do keep that, and I do my best. Um, and I've told people, I've had people who wanted to be greeters, and eh, they just didn't turn out like, like they should have. And I'd say, now look, you don't mark a person's name until you see the whites of their eyes. Because I had been told, so-and-so's here. Okay, I mark them off. And they weren't there. Like, how did you figure out that they're here when they're not here? So you, you, you got to keep up with that stuff. And... Um, so, um, also the candy basket. Boy, did that come a long way. Uh, people used to ask me, hey, you got any mints on you? No, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have any today. Next Sunday, they'd say, got any mints? So I finally took a hint, got some of those little red and white mints, put them in a little basket, and sat them out for anybody who wanted the mint. It grew. Hey, you got any butterscotch? No, I just got these. How about some butterscotch or spearmint? Hey, I like cinnamon. So you see what it has grown to now, and uh, so <laughs> that's okay. If that's what the people like, and as long as the pastor says it's okay, I'll do it. And uh, once in a while, I need a little bit of financial help with it, so but I don't complain. And uh, so anyway, uh, and the water, the water stouter started out, fix the pastor, glass of water. Then it started out, fix the praise team, a pitcher of water. Then it started buying bottled water. I mean, I bought it, okay? I'm not taking credit or anything. I bought it and put it in the refrigerator, and people started helping themselves. And even though they weren't on the praise team, and I put a note out there, hey, this is for the praise team. So you see where it's come to. <laughs> it has grown. And that's, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. You know, so the candy basket, that's just, that's just one of those things. John, John likes it. And uh, so it has continued to grow from there. So um, what you do is think about it. Think about your life, think about what your gifts are. You might ne not necessarily be a greeter or in hospitality, uh, but you must be able to enjoy meeting new people and providing a warm welcome for them. You even use hospitality in your home or maybe at work, not just in church, but in different places. Uh, people with this gift can create a warm, welcoming environment, meet new people and help them feel welcome, provide a safe and comfortable setting where relationships can be built, connect people together, and set people at ease. Uh, personal traits of being a, a greeter or of hospitality, caring, friendly, sincere, outgoing, sensitive, peacemaker, trustworthy, and inviting. Uh, years ago, my grandmother had a massive stroke, 
and she was in a nursing home. She couldn't talk, she couldn't walk. She laid in the bed for six and a half years in a nursing home. And my grandfather would go visit her every day. Well, um, I would visit him once in a while. And six and a half years she, until she died, and then six months later to the very day he passed away. But he was very faithful in um, going to visit her, and usually twice a day. Uh, Jim, Matthew 25, 31, 40. Grandpa would read this to me. He read this a lot, and I think he was uh, dropping hints to the family that weren't being quite as uh, good as they should have been to Grandma. She was like my mother. She was more like my mother than my real mother. And it was her prayers that brings me to where I'm at now. So, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall sit the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when we saw the, when, when Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When when saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. And don't forget the scripture, and I forgot to look it up, uh, giving someone a cup of water in Jesus' name. And so... Uh, there's one other thing I wanted to read to you. And I forgot, to, I don't think I gave Jim this scripture. Proverbs 25, 21 through 22. If, I don't know if I gave it to you or not. Wait a minute, where's it at? Proverbs 25, 21, 22. Yeah, I'll find it. Oops. Well... Turned over to Ecclesiastes. Come on, 25. 25, 21 through 22. If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. If he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord will reward thee. I heard my grandmother say more than once, I'm going to heap coals of fire on their head. And it's like, what are you talking about, Grandma? <laughs> so, but... Um, that's what it takes to be hospitality, greeter. Um, that's where I have, what I have learned. And Mo has done some searching. And um, we are all called to do something. And you just need to find out what it is for you. And uh, like the pastor's been preaching, um, I would rather say, hear God say, well done, thou good and faithful servant than to hear him say, I never knew you, and to please men. Um, I don't do this to please men. So uh, I just hope John is happy when I take care of him. But, uh, but I don't do it for men. And uh, if you think you can do better than me, okay. <laughs> That's the value cap percent. Because I did... There was a point when someone was trying to take my position, was trying to steal my position from me, and um, I dealt with a lot of hurts and anger, too. 
uh, why would you want to take this from me? Uh, just trying to push their way in and take my position. And I didn't care for that too much, but God took care of it. So, you know. I am, I'm not going, it's been, how long has it been? What? I'll, I'll wait till next week to do the other part. But I do want to add to this. We have several here that have operate in the gift of hospitality. Well, Alice knew he probably. Um, can any of you name one person for hospitality? Miss Ella. How many times has she opened up her house? to the ladies, brought them in, and fixed a small meal, or a, a huge meal, really. <laughs> and we'd go and have lunch with her, and for the pastors, the first lady, or, or whoever, and she, when you go to her home, you always feel welcome. She is there to, if you need water, she'll give you the water. If you need coffee, she'll... And if it's not fresh in her eyes, she'll make you a fresh pot, even if she just made it. Uh, and then there's Pat. She likes to help. I've seen both of these ladies, and I've seen other ladies here. When God will give, tell them that to make something or to buy something, and they bring it for someone that God has laid up on their heart. And at the time that they do it, they may have been going through some really difficult time. But because they obeyed God and heard his voice, made that person feel loved and wanted and, you know, and cherished. I've had them do it to me. And I was going through rough times. And Ella made me a quilt one time. And I love the beach. Of course, my husband doesn't. He said he didn't lose anything down there, and he's not going back to find it, you know. So she made me a quilt, and it was called Sand, Sea, and Sun. And it had the lighthouse on it. It had seashells. It had the sand. It had the water and everything. And many times, whenever I would have to be in the hospital with little Mark, that was the blanket that I took with me. Then my grandson come along. He decided, wow, and she's, re she's repaired that thing two or three times for me. And he decided he liked it. It felt comfy to him. So he took it. So she made me another one. And it was about the sunshine. And it had, was bright colors. And so now I get that, and whenever I have it, I'm like, this is mine. You know, nobody else can have it because they get away from me. But there are times when God uses some people more so in a gift, a certain gift like hospitality, than others. It's not that you don't have the gift of hospitality. But whenever they listen to God and he can, the Spirit can flow through them, then when they come through those doors, strangers, people that we don't know, and they receive that smile, they receive that warm handshake, that warm welcome, and you act like you want them to come back and you tell them where everything's at so that they can feel comfortable, then that leads on to the other person that has a special gift which I'll talk about next week and helps. It takes every one of us in this church there's no big eyes and little use should not be. It's all about God. It's not about us. It's about the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit. And without the fruits of the Spirit, it's nothing. It is nothing. And the greatest of these is love so if you didn't get anything else out tonight about it remember love is the center of everything of the gifts and the spirit okay and the fruits of the spirit uh hospitality is a great thing 
Would you want to go back? We never know when we are entertaining angels unaware. I read online where this pastor asked a man to come in, and I wanted to have the pastor to do it, but then I thought, nah. They had a certain uh, man come in that was looked like he was homeless, and he was dirty. He didn't smell good, and he didn't have good clothes and good shoes and stuff, and not like we look. He was different. And he come in, and he did that because he wanted to see how his church would react to this person. Just remember, who knows who's going to come through those doors and how we react to them is how our church will be remembered. If you feel like you have uh, the gift of hospitality and you want to be a greeter or you want to help Pat and do things, Pat to do things, let her know. It takes more than one. One can't do it all because there's areas that all uh, that is needed that needs help in them. But anyway, I was just her moral support. I don't understand why, but that's okay. I'll be her support. God sent her to me, and we've been friends a long time. And long times whenever I was going through things and I'd be all down and everything, She'd say, well, now, just pull your girl panties up and be, and deal with it. Just deal with it. And I'd get so mad, you know, because I was thinking, oh, I, I have the right to be upset. And so then when she started getting, going, you know, through things, I'd say, well, just deal with it. You know, it is what it is. You know, God's in control. Either we can allow him to have control and move us through it so we can learn because we will use that somewhere along the line. Heidi, what you're going through, you will help someone else along the line. Sandy, gone through both the, the surgeries and stuff, God has a purpose for everything. But you have a gift. Use it. Be faithful in using it. And he will reward you. And you don't do it for a reward. Lots of times there's no thanks in it whatsoever, but God is the person that you are doing it for. Smile. Love them. Even though they're hard to love sometimes, I have to say, God, please love them through me. Because right now I would like to just send them somewhere else. You know, I'm being truthful. But then God says, that's enough. These are my people. So therefore, that's what I had to say. I'm sure I'll probably think of a lot of other stuff later, but that's okay. So. She, she's right. Um, years ago, before I, I even started coming to this church, I've been here since it first opened, a couple of weeks after it opened. But um, I was in a bad state of depression no friends, nothing to do, nowhere to go. And I remember sitting in my living room one day, just sitting there, just sitting there. And I started praying and asking the Lord, please send me a friend. I need a friend, Lord. I need a friend who will take me for as I am and for who I am and what I am and just be my friend and understand me. And sure enough, it took a few years, but, but she, he put that thing in my life. <laughs> and we've been buddies ever since. And uh, we do, uh, late at night sometimes, we'll talk. If one of us is going through a rough time, we'll, we'll talk. Uh, you know what? That's kind of like a gift of helps. She's helping me. You know, I'm helping her, and we do tell each other, you know, pull up your big girl panties and let's deal with it. And uh, it hurts, it's hard to hear, but uh, it's true. So if you need a friend, pray for one. God will send you the right one, and, and he sure did with us. So, And I want to say Nathan is showing some fruits or some um, helps. He's showing some, some helps.
He may not realize it, but he is, and so is Ethan. And I'm proud of them for what they've become. So anyway, I'll shut up.